what's uh what's going on miles oh we're starting already jesus yeah yeah already i'm not it's just it's only three minutes past the the hour we normally start at like at least 12 yeah you think we're setting people up for like uh, uh unreachable expectations uh unachievable yeah i'm right? a bit worried about that to be fair so. yeah because you know we, we start three minutes past the hour friday on monday they're going to expect us to start three minutes past the hour and just can't please anybody miles <laughs> that's true that's true but no no things are all right how you doing you all right doing all right man doing all right uh it's, it's i think it's been a rough week uh mentally personally i don't want to go i'm not gonna oh, go into man. details but um you know it was, it was the type of week where i was like i should just take the whole fucking week off man and recoup and like you, you know you get into your own head where you're like well I'm, it's not that bad brian just keep yeah. doing keep doing games cast everything will be fine and then like you and then by the end of the week you're like somehow closer to burnout than, than you were before you know so um, i uh i am so um, actually I'm, I'm had a convert I may disappear for a few days when, because I might need it. Oh soon. man! Yeah, I, I I saw my brother um, earlier today who um, he's dealing with like long COVID and stuff, and um, he's had a week. Or he's just tran transferring jobs and that, and he sort of had a week off, and he sort of said how he had a couple of days off, and then he was like, oh, "I'm feeling better," and then he just started working on stuff again and then was feeling rough because of it. And he was just like, I wanted to feel better quicker. And I was like, yeah, when you're feeling low, you know, taking time off is being productive. Yeah. Like that's something you always got to get in your head. And it's hard. We, we always got to tell ourselves that taking time off work is good for you because in the long run, you'll benefit. And it always takes a bit longer than you'd like. Because I, you, you and I are the same. We're always like, okay, I've, I've slept in and had a had a an, a an early night, you know, and stuff one day. Now I can get back on with it. It's like, no, nah, sometimes you've got to, take a few days off so if you do that good for you yeah i may, I may do that um i guess i guess you guys will know tomorrow tomorrow by tomorrow night if i actually do that or not because if psvr this week goes up tomorrow then i didn't fucking do what i wanted to do <laughs> Instead, you, should, you should just i put the you channel should upload before myself psvr this week and it should be just you snoozing this week and it's just you going <laughs> yeah <laughs> this week in psvr 2 news brian paul sleeps all week long yeah <laughs> She sounds really nice. All right, man. But it is not. Uh, it's not Saturday, and I've not taken today off. So let's fucking start the show. Let's start it. the blue box has returned um one second one second you guys just hang in there miles hang in there everything's gonna be fine i'm a blue box happy guys happy guys i'm a blue box guys why is it gonna be blue <laughs> i don't know you're fucking racist this is ps ps uh, uh, do, you, do you know the do you know the introduction i can't even feign enthusiasm i don't know anymore. what show is this it's uh Tor switch nintendo switch without parole it's tornado's tail without parole <laughs> which is would get way higher views than anything we've ever done over here i'll tell you what brian the arguments of having a few days off are forever leaning in your favor at the moment <laughs> <laughs> this is psvr gamescast live we film live every single monday wednesday and two Wise friday right here on youtube we do a live 6 p.m eastern for your viewing pleasure but luckily and boy are you ever so lucky that we care about your oral pleasure because you can listen to this thing on podcast services of your choice although Google podcast is no longer a thing. So hopefully you found another one. If you're one of the 5% of our listeners who listen to podcasts over there, my name is Brian Paul from this channel right here, PSVR without parole. And this man over here to my fuck. It's my right. You're right. It's so strange. It's miles Dyer from youtube.com slash miles. Yo. Oh, good. I thought we lost sound for a second and I looked up. And <laughs> talking. Uh, if I, if I could be really still, I could pretend there's a bit of lag. But I can't stay still. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing, Brian? How you doing, Game Cats? This is going to be one of those shows where everything's a bit up in the air, but that's absolutely fine because it's Friday and that's what we do. We keep everyone on edge. And I think, oh, no, I thought you lagged out there, Brian. That was very convincing. Um <laughs> <laughs> how you do it we, we've already sort of asked how each other's doing um dude it's good to be back doing like let's plays again and playing psvr2 games and uh, i'm still playing catch up and i've been playing some great games catch up i've been playing some is that the prequel to max mustard oh dude 
Is that is it definitely coming to PSVR two? Right, nice mustard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and ketchup. Okay, it, so so it's gonna be Kim Ketchup, right? And then Max Mustard. Kim, Kim Ketchup. Yeah. There we go. The brother Kim, and sister dude, team. I like it, dude. Trademark that quick, quick, and then you can sell it back to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they're like, oh, we we, we were doing Kim Ketchup anyway. So, uh, no. <laughs> so close. Yeah, so close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm my millions were almost made overnight. Yeah. But no. <laughs> But no, it's been an interesting mix of games this week, Brian. Um, some have been excellent, and some have been what's uh, what's the word? Not so excellent. Not so excellent. Uh, I'll, I'll put it politely. Less excellent. But, um, less less excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent, Smithers. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So, so definitely think of Bill and Ted, but then I didn't say it the way that uh, either one of them would have said. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, you've been you've been playing a ton of games. I, actually, I want to talk about the games you've been playing, but I want to uh, I want to read through these tips real quick. Uh, Do it. Th- thank you, everybody, for being here. You guys are awesome. Appreciate you. Uh, bye, bye, tornado. I appreciate you guys being here. Tornado, however, not going to be here. Apparently, she's going to go investigate the other room. Uh, Professor Lewis with a five dollar tip says, "Hey, game cats, this week Sunday multiplayer is after the fall. Zombies, ice." explosions join us 2 p.m eastern saturday april 7th nope sunday april 7th this is why and there's a new update for it isn't there there is there is yeah uh, they said it's better ui better onboarding um a couple new horde maps right so there's a bunch of shit going on over there uh with after the fall excellent definitely thought that that game was done and uh we probably don't see anything from it again for a while or ever um man i've you guys know my thoughts on after the fall but i mean it it it's a super polished game on PSVR too. The haptics are just fantastic. The adaptive triggers are fantastic. If you're gonna play that game, that is where to play it. Agreed. Agreed. Um, we also got Andrew Bailey with the ten quid says, uh, "Today's my birthday, so have some cake and stuff on me." Well, happy birthday, Andrew Bailey. Um, happy uh, happy birthday, Andrew. I I think he's I, I think he's uh what well, you want to take bets you want closest without going over how, how old do you think Andrew Bailey is? Oh, I couldn't possibly say. I okay. think that's none of our business, to be honest. Yeah, well that that's why I'm that's why we're doing this because it's super professional <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, um yeah. I'm gonna go for a nice round number. Let's go with uh, thirty three. That's a nice round number. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Put the price is right. You on this closes without going over. Thirty four. That's right. That's right. Andrew, let us know in the chat who's closest without going over. If he's thirty three, I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, it's just not my day. Uh, Genesis Quas is forty two. Um. Everyone's guessing. St- uh. Staff and stuffs is thirty three. And Andrew's like, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> yeah, right. I. I I tipped for my birthday. I didn't want to be questioned. I didn't interrogate it. Well, Andrew, um, yeah. hopefully, hopefully we can give you something in return for your birthday. Um, if you guys, uh, if you guys saw the title of the video, if you saw the thumbnail of the video, you know that we've got ten genotype keys to give away today on today's Whoa. show. Uh, yeah, and actually, you know, I've actually got a few more than that, so we'll be giving a couple more away uh, later on as well. So here's how this is going to work. We want to reward you guys for for watching live. We appreciate you being here watching live. Uh, you know, maybe I'll post a couple in the comment section a couple hours after the show's over for people who aren't watching live. Give them a chance as well. But here's how this is going to work. Miles is very British, very very British. Wow, right? one in the chat already. Woo! There you go. First one up for grabs. Everybody, go for it. Uh, and it so, uh, and so if Miles posts a key in the chat throughout the course of this episode, that means it's the European region. And then if I post one, it's from uh, North America because I'm as uh, as as United Statesy and as they come. I'm very North American. I am patriotic and I love my country, Miles. Yeah, I, I d- definitely. I'll definitely ex- get really feel the sense of freedom when you post your key in the in the in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I, I want every, every time I post a key, I want everybody in the chat to sing along. Proud to be an American. <laughs> Fuck this place. Um, Carry on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Being an American allows me to say "fuck this place" because that's what freedom means. That's pay. That's very patriotic. I think so. I do think so. Mm-hmm. Um, also, let us know if you get the keys, guys, because um, uh, you know 
You know, you know. All right, we're going to talk more about genotype in a little bit here. Uh, but first and foremost, um, Miles, what the fuck have you been playing? You're back, you're back up and running on your channel, youtube.com slash Miles. Yeah. If, you're not, if you're not subscribed already, make sure you go subscribe to him over there. On his endless attempt to play every PSVR 2 game ever made, uh, how is that? How is that going? You're 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 back up and running. Are you are you are you close to to, to um, having played them all? I think I'm. Um, I think in the next ten days, or actually in the, probably in the next seven to eight days, I will have caught up again, which will be good. Um, so I'm playing. I'm basically live streaming once every day. So I'm just going to list them off quickly, and then you can pick on the ones you want to talk about, if any. Yeah. Uh, over dark, <laughs> over dark. Obviously ahead of our show last week. Forest Farm, Beat the Beats, Train Chase, um, Happy Funland, Stilt. And then I finished Stilt today, and then I saw a text from Brian saying, oh, I hear Miles, um, have you played Genotype yet? We're going to talk about it on the show. And I was like, okay, I'm going to play it. And then I literally, 10 minutes later, did it as a Let's Play. So nice. I did a Let's Play of Genotype just before the show. Amazing. Um, which is my favorite way to sort of play a game first and uh was very very impressed with that but i mean i could quickly just give my instant feelings on all these games quickly forest farm just stay away from <laughs> this is this was listen, there's two two of the games that you listed i really wanted to talk about we will talk about all of them if you want to that's totally fine uh no, no, you, forest farm you, you was the one the... immediately that i was uh, curious about because you know games like stardew valley games like um, oh, no. you know e even um what is it uh, across the valley like i want I, I i want a game like stardew in vr is this this is are you telling me this is worse somehow than across the valley so there are elements in this game I really, really appreciate, um, as in you sort of explore this open area. Mm -hmm. um, you have different items that you can use, and the more you use them, whether it's an axe for trees, a pickaxe for stone, fishing rod for fish, uh, buckets for collecting water, a shovel for shoveling, I guess is the technical term. Um, and you get XP... And you also do tasks for people in the village and the citadel and stuff. This sounds amazing. Uh, it does. I was, I, like, this, I was like, I was like, great. I'm cutting down trees and I can turn them into planks and um, I can plant seeds. And when you actually plant a tree, it, it, it like animates. It literally comes out the ground and it slowly grows around. And then then you can pick the apples out of the tree. There are things in this game that are really really good, but and this is a big but. So much of the mechanics just don't work in terms of like the inventory is infuriating. Um, there's the sound of the rain is kind of cool, but like there's not really a game here. Um, there was someone that wanted me to find them three tomatoes or tomatoes, as you might call it, uh, in other places in the world. Um, and I gave her not, I gave her three, and then sh she didn't say so I completed the mission. I gave her six tomatoes, Brian. And it still wasn't enough. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to help someone else. Um, there's this big, like, mushroom dude who, like, runs the kingdom, I guess. And it's called... <laughs> it's not the Mushroom Kingdom. It was called, like, the Mushroom <laughs> Citadel or something like this. I can't the Mushroom remember. Kingdom is such a better... Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, he goes, yeah, I'm going to show you the Citadel. And then he says, follow me. I mean, as you can imagine, a mushroom is going to walk pretty slowly. Dude, it took like five minutes. It was so slow for this mushroom dude to take us to where we needed to go. I went off and did like one or two other missions <laughs> by the time he got to where he was taking us. Um, look, this is an indie game. I, regardless of whether I like it or not, I have respect for people that make indie games. There are some charming elements into this. I was happy to have a VR fishing game. The, the fishing elements in this are infuriating experience it for yourself if you want to find out um but um yeah um overall it's just the promise when you first play this game was something i was like oh this is cool there's all these mechanics but then you realize it doesn't really mean a lot at least for what i can see so um i bought a chicken coop and i was like this is great and then it like spawned it and i was like wait what am i doing with this and i'm like trying to carry it and it topples over and then i buy chickens and i'm like where are the chickens that i've just bought and they appear in this like farm area that 
so they don't even hang out in your chicken coop. So there's just loads of stuff. Like, I'm like, this just doesn't make sense. I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, so it went from, oh, this is kind of charming to this is very frustrating. Um, yeah. I had some funny moments in it. And if there are places in the map that you're trying to get to, because you have to complete a mission for them to open the gate, if you just walk up to the gate and then physically walk through it, you can clip through it. So I got to the end of the game very quickly. Um, but yeah, um, so and it, dude, the fact it uses the same character models from the um, Run or Die and um, oh, no, for Chris real. Payne Hero, yeah, I'm just like, oh, wow. I have that association. It gives me that kind of PTSD. Um, so yeah, um, I same as you because I've just told people if you want a cozy game, I would, I would, stro- I would recommend above this. Uh, gardens of the sea and across the valley now across the valley and gardens of the sea you want them to come together where you have that kind of yeah looking after animals but in an open world stardew valley a game i've not played but it, that is kind of what you're after and this game kind of attempts it but it's just like they've added all these mechanics but it just doesn't lead to anything there's no sense of like well, there's no point leveling up my axe because uh, unless I want to get a trophy, so I'm, I'm not going to say any more. People can check out my let's play with it. Um, I give my final thoughts at the end of all the all the videos and that. But I think you'll very uh, quickly realise uh, what the issues are with it. Don Sing- Don Sangoni, same. I hope I got that right. The gangster game cat rare with the five quid says, "Been watching the channel for years now. Decided I would finally say something. I'm I am very British too, by the way. Love you guys." I don't think Miles admits to being very British. I think that's something I've accused him of, and he has not uh, told me I'm wrong. I don't have I don't have a lot to compare you to, Miles. That's but, all right. I'm pretty I'm pretty British. Yeah, I'm just watching on the uh, replay the uh, the trailer for this uh, forest farm game, and it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that, th- these are the kind of games where. Um, these are the kind of games where I go, well, even if they're not so great, I bet I'll still have some fun with them. And uh, very disappointed to hear that this is the case with Forest Farm, that I'm not going to have much fun with it. Uh, Dude, I find when I am giving my impressions on games, if I really like a game or really don't like it, that's when I feel most guilty about giving my opinion, which is like, if I really like a game, I'm like, I hope I'm not overhyping this and like yeah. people are going to think I'm completely misguided. And if I really don't like a game, I hope people are th- not thinking I'm being overly harsh and, and maybe I haven't enjoyed it because I've not understood something right. I've just seen that there's a horse and cart in this game. I've not come across that. That looks badass <laughs> being able to go on a horse and cart. So I wouldn't mind. But honestly, the environments, the trees, the sound when it's raining, it's kind of chill. Like, I like it. I felt like, yeah, I'm present. But then just as you're going along, I was just like, oh, okay. There's not a lot here. Um, the um, chickens, you need to feed them what looks like grapes. Um, and I can't find grapes in the game. So if anyone can help me with that, my chickens would appreciate it. Yeah, I'm sure you're desperate to because, go back to it. Because chickens famously eat grapes, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Maybe, maybe, maybe in England. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Uh, it's funny that you brought up that whole feeling about you know overselling a game that you like and, and maybe underselling a game that you dislike because uh, you know people we're trying to, we're out here trying to save people money we're trying to point people in the right direction like maybe let them know about games that uh, that that maybe they wouldn't know about otherwise uh, and we're trying to save them some money on top of that saying hey this game that's supposed to be good isn't so good uh, and uh, and I've the, the next game we're going to talk about. Uh, is a game that I feel like um, I'm that I'm really I'll just say it this way because I couldn't think of any other way to say it I'm really happy that there are four voices on this channel and it's not just me because uh, I would like to know now your opinion of Happy Funland dude Happy Funland was such a surprise because I'd seen your review Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of different people's reviews and I thought as I was going into the Let's Play, I genuinely was like, I'm not looking forward to this. It's going to be a big disappointment. A lot of the criticisms you've given, I actually agree with. And you do say that if they fix X, Y, and Z, which we'll go into in a moment, there is a promising game here. Um, but they do need to be fixed. And I agree with those things. The question I want to ask, Brian, and, and by the way, this is not to say people that have not done this 
their opinion doesn't matter. Yeah. I do think it enhances the experience. Have you been to Disneyland in Florida or um Yeah, when I was like seven. You know, so okay, it's, same, it's been same. a long time and uh so I'm familiar with like the 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 quintessential rides, the yes. things, the iconic ones. I, I've been on Space Mountain and um uh you know it's it's, it's I've gone through it's a small world after all like yeah you know, been on the teacups i've done i've done all the you know the core things yeah. right but having not been there since i was seven i don't know what's going on in that park obviously okay. and in the last well, three years I, yeah i I've, I've not been in 25 years so um it's been a long time for me but the reason i mentioned that was one of, the, one of the biggest positives I gave about this in my first impressions was I think it is one of the best examples of virtual world building in, in virtual reality. Okay. And I, I say one of, I'm not going to say the best. And the reason I say it is because when I was playing this game, I think the very beginning bit where you go on the boat to get there and stuff, I was just like, oh, come on, let's get there. And when you're sort of starting to enter the park, I'm like, eh. but once you get in there, I was just like, I do not feel like I'm in a game right now. I feel like I'm in an abandoned theme park. Like the fact that you can go into all these different shops and there's all these different items and so much detail and all the yeah. different pieces of artwork and all the satirical um, photos of this Walt Disney character. Um, more and or more grizzly. Whatever. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. And him when he was six, smoking a cigarette <laughs> and stuff like that. I thought this is this this is kind of this is really impressive like the i'm going to say research but sort of the creative direction that's gone on here i think is outstanding it really really is now saying that some of the issues that you flagged up click turning big big no no absolutely frustrating also the i was getting frame rate issues on the social screen um did you? I don't know if you were having it, that. Um, I believe it runs at ninety native, and so when 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 a game runs at ninety, it's going to run at forty five on your social screen, and so it's kind of constantly look choppy for people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was what was happening, which was a real shame. Um, there was a few. There was a few instances where there were frame rate drops and stuff like that. Um, yeah, a the combat here and it, there. Yeah, yeah. The combat complete joke. Um, no haptics. Unbelievable. However. The way that they, when they, you take their head off and there's that sort of slow mo sparking, I think is awesome. And I love how the animatronic faces sort of come apart and bits come off. So it's like there's something there, but the combat itself is just completely like there's nothing to it. And it's like there's no sense of collision. Um, and I found that very, very frustrating. Um, I got to the, um, it's a small world boat ride, completed it. And then I fell through the floor uh, and I was underneath the theme park. And because of some of the stuff that happens in the game, my first thought was, oh, is this meant to happen? Like, is this a part of the <laughs> sort of coming out of the box? So I start walking and then I fall underneath that bit and I'm completely out of the game. And I had to um, re reload the game. And then I started at the beginning of the It's a Small World ride. And I was like, I'm not doing this on the live stream again. That is so frustrating. Um so but there are things that happen in this game and you say that like at the end there's some really cool stuff happening i'm really excited for because being able to go on the rides i thought were great i think there's a lot of stuff on the rides where it could be smartened up a little bit yeah. um like when you're on the pirate ride the sort of shooting the gun the laser doesn't always so, connect and stuff so, like that yeah i just found that whole ride to be so boring like it's like yeah fake, fake yeah. guns no real danger it's like yeah but i don't want to really spoil stuff but I do like that on the it's the small world ride that there's occasions where you turn behind you and there's something on the boat with you like yeah. and there's a couple of those moments where you turn your back and then you turn around and then something's there that I think that's done really really well and there's a bit where you're in a a restroom and you get stabbed and then you have this trippy experience that was incredible like for me I was like this is when VR's at its best I'm literally tripping balls. And you have all these sort of cubes floating through the, the sky and you can literally hit them. Like the, 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 the contact stuff, I was saying there was none of that with the enemy, but there is with the environment. Like you can hit stuff Which and move so it everywhere. Which is so strange, right? It's like they've yes. done such a good job of like just littering right. the entire gift shop with shit to destroy. And you can take any item that you can pick up and smash it. And like that was, I love that. But then but yeah. then combat is, like you said, it's a joke. It's like, well, how, how is the same care not given to an entire element of the game right 
So yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. And, and and then and this is going to seem like a really small compliment to give it, yeah. but it's like when you're on the boat, if you drop your weapon on the boat, it just sits on the seat and it goes round with you. And you might be thinking, big whoop. The amount of games where you drop something and then it will start clipping through, or yeah. you know what I mean. There was none of that. It was on the boat with you. So I, that's an example where there's some really good design stuff which seems inconsistent with others. So I'm just wondering, did they run out of time? And you know, why why did they miss the boat? But like the environment looks. I, I wish they had dynamic foveated rendering, just so it was sharper. Yeah. There's this amazing world. I want to. I want it to look clearer because yeah. it should look clearer because it 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 looks amazing. And um, so look, I'm not here saying Happy Funland is an incredible game. I'm just saying that I was. It was way better than expected. And I do think that with the right improvements on things that are completely fixable, I think this is a, a, a potentially amazing experience. And I say that again because I've not got through the full game yet. It could just get like completely boring. And yeah. um, but I've I, been... actually, as somebody who's completed the entire game, I think it only gets better. I do think that the last half hour of the game is its strong point. And I said even in my review, I think it's actually it's for a game. I think I gave a five five two, which is rough. And I think there's no denying that this game is rough. Uh, despite, yes. despite I, I, I thought we were going to sit here and disagree during this conversation, Miles, but we don't disagree at all. No. I completely, I completely agree that the theme park is. It, it looks like it's it's lived in. It looks like a theme park that yes. used to once upon a time be fully functional. It has a lot of stuff going on. There's so much diversity in this thing, uh, in terms of like you know different sections of the park looking different and the different rides and the different themes of it, and and the fact that you know that it's kind of coming alive as you go through it. I, I found that fascinating, but then I found it also to be a ton of wasted potential because of everything else that gets in this game's way. Um, I will say that I think I made a major blunder when I played through because I was look, I was on Twitter. I saw Perp Games that tweeted, "I'll oh, make sure you you know throw that uh throw that putter be you know store store that behind your back because you're gonna need it no! later." No, and I was oh, like I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. The beginning of this game, the fucking tour guide, whatever the fuck his name is, talks incessantly for seven minutes straight and then uh, and then there's other things talking at the same time and it's just yes. non-stop at no point you piece of shit you could not tell me hey if you want to store something put it over your shoulder are you kidding i was looking for holsters i i, I tried to put something over my shoulder and it just dropped on the ground and so i just said well there's no way to carry anything in this game I other than just hold it right and so i was like you you're gonna fucking waste my time with seven minutes of like non-stop dialogue but never once say yeah. the important thing that's like you can't like you know just like throw that shit behind you. Come fucking on. The the, the talking at the beginning, the the whole bit with the boat, the boat ride bit going there was kind of cool, and and the character models great, but the yapping and like I was trying to listen to what the robots with the ticket thing were saying, and I was like, shut up. I thought it. I'm because of being given the heads up about this. I was surprised how quickly it then didn't become a problem. Like it, but. but it is a massive problem. To, I'm not saying it's not a problem. I was worried it was going to be like that throughout the entire game. And there are moments where it picks up and that. But like it, it didn't bother me further in the game as much um, as I thought it would. Um, also, I just love the, the jokes, man. I know some people had issues like oh, looking at some reviewers about like it's very vulgar and lots of gratuitous sexual commentary and stuff like this. It's... But it, it's, it's a part of the satire. I yeah. get it. Like it's this is not a game for kids, firstly. This is an adult satirical take on it, it's theme a horror parks. game on top of that. And like, it, I mean, it's it, definitely for mature audiences. Yeah, it, it's for mature audiences. And so like your review score I think is completely fair. And for me, it's kind of one of those things where this, I wouldn't play this because it's a game. Yeah. I would play this because it's an experience. And I want to be clear when I say that, that is not always a backhanded compliment of like, Oh, it's not good enough to be a game. No, I think it's, it's an incredible experience. Like I was amazed going around constantly. It was, it's one of the few games where I actually wanted to look at everything to look at like what the jokes were and stuff like that in the store. Someone in the chat noticed because I was joking about the name tags that you could buy. Um, and I said <laughs> that as a kid, I always hated this because on school trips, I would, there was never Miles. It was always Matt, Mike. Oh, and not even like, Miles with an I? Because that's what no, I always experienced. No, never it Miles. Was, there was always Brian, but always Brian with an I, not with a Y. Right, right. And then uh, and then I saw Bort, and I thought, what's Bort? And then someone said, oh, it's Bart from, and then they showed the clip from The Simpsons, and it's like, it's literally from The Simpsons. And I was like, that's amazing, like, these references. Why do um, I feel like Nick Nick was the one to spot that? He's yes, a Simpsons guy. Nick, 
yeah yeah it was it was um so yeah um well two happy, two things yeah. two things before we before we wrap this thing up actually yeah, maybe yeah, sure. three because i see a tip here um <sighs> first uh i saw nihilus ryan say fuck now ryan what the fuck did you say that i wanted to talk about i can't believe I, my my mind just blanked Ah, it's gonna drive me crazy okay but uh i should i should have written it down uh he said gratuitous sex is my favorite kind of sex no um, it's earlier than that <laughs> um I mean, listen. I, th I thought the entire game was really immature. Like, I, I thought that the I, th I oh, thought yeah. that the jokes were. I don't know, man. It's just not. It's just not my style of humor, right? And so, but that. So I didn't appreciate it nearly as much uh, as as I'm sure other people uh, did. And, and just and just to be clear, it's not my kind of humor either. Like yeah. when he tells you to get the torch out of the. Um, sorry, we call it torch flashlight. Yeah. We, we, know. <laughs> we know. Okay. We um, know. Out there, and then there's a vibrator uh, in there. I mean, yeah. It's it's fair, but yeah, yeah. Um, and so, uh, so here I'm just going to jump to Rody's uh, point because I can't, I can't remember what Niles Ryan said. Um, he said, uh, he said they they also don't tell you that the camera kills enemies instantly. You can kill waves of them with one flash, which I've only found a couple cameras throughout the course of the game, and um, and and I, and I managed to like wait until a bunch of enemies were coming at me and flashed the picture. They all fucking died immediately. So I was like, is there something involving light? Like, so I, t so I, so I was trying to shine, doing this Alan Wake thing, shining my flashlight on them while I'm beating them. Like, and no, no difference. So I was like, what, what yeah. the hell is going on here? Like, it just shit isn't explained. <sighs> I just, I don't know, man. I just, I just really want this game to be good um, because it, they, they put so much work into it. Right. And, and it's just it, these technical things, keeping it, keeping at least me from being able to enjoy the things that, uh, that that I should be able to appreciate all, all the work that's been put into it. It's these technical things. It's almost like these last minute things. I mean, give it a little DFR, give it um, smooth turning, uh, and, and we're already halfway there. And, and let's let's edit down the um, what's it called? Voiceovers at the beginning. Yeah, uh, yeah, agreed. Uh, not sure, Brando with a five dollar tip says Sony internal disconnect. Happy Funland can spin you around in rides, but Vertigo Two can't turn you with vehicles. Oh, I see. Yeah, I did go in the spinning beer things, and I was like, "This is my." I genuinely felt dizzy after that ride, but it was amazing. <laughs> it was yeah. just, it was, it was cool. But yeah, but yeah. Uh, listen, if you're willing to put up with a lot of crap, I do think that the ending is worth sticking around for. No, I remember what it was. Nihilus Ryan. Nihilus Ryan said it's, it seems like a wait for a sale type game, and I got to be honest with you, I don't think the price is bad. I think the price is no, I don't. good. I think it's a twenty five dollar game. Like this feels like a twenty five dollar game. But it feels like a twenty-five dollar game, content-wise, not quality-wise. And so, if you're going to wait, I, I wouldn't wait for a sale. I'd wait for the first round of patches to drop. That's I think that's where I'm at with this. Um, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It's all right. Anyway, um, you had fun with Stilt. I love Stilt. Uh, still, yeah. So, still, I played the the tutorial in the first level um like weeks ago mm -hmm. when it came out and i enjoyed it but coming back to it because i think we did it because we spoke about it on the show and i was like I, I still need to get the hang of the the movement yeah having a break and coming back to it it totally clicked today and dude the multiplayer like i know you talked about it in your review and stuff i was blown away by the multiplayer like i literally saw people bouncing around as they joined on eight eight players um and the different multiplayer modes and the dev was actually in the chat during the Let's Play, and they said they're thinking of adding more things. I think if they did a Takeshi Castle kind of uh, Fall Guys race obstacle yeah. course, and there's there's so many different things. I thought the multiplayer was incredible, and it's just a fully fleshed game. And, and there, there was a few people asking questions about how does this compare to Toss, which I think is a fair thing because they have similar aesthetics. They're both kind of obstacle games. Um, and my honest answer is, I think Toss is probably going to be better for people that perhaps don't have their VR legs, or in the case of Stilts, your probably. VR arms, probably, um, because it is just linear. Um, and and Toss is a is a, a great game that you and I both enjoyed, but still is a much more fully fleshed game. There's, it's not just like you got to do this level, this level, this level. I'd say like. Toss feels more like a mobile game in terms of like, or like the Angry Birds games, you know, where it's just here's level one, 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 two, one, three. Sure. Whereas this is like 
it feels like a an N64 platformer, as someone said in the chat today, and I thought that's perfectly described. The music, the aesthetics, the motion feels great, the power-ups, the haptics. I've Again, I've only done level one, two, and then I jumped to seven just to do something a bit more difficult. So I've still got a lot more levels to play. But if it holds up like this, um, I would even say that this is going to be in the conversation for a top 25. Not to say it will end up in there, but I do think that the quality of it is 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 excellent. Yeah. Like I, I was really blown away by it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easy to maybe ignore Stilt and, and think of it as like a throwaway game, and you know, just because because it's you know because the cartoony aesthetic, it's um, yeah, relatively simple looking platformer, goofy locomotion system. I I think it'd be easy for people to to maybe write this one off, but man, I had so and much to- fun like way more fun in stilt than i've had in so many games recently so many games have had issues and this is just i don't know just it can be super frustrating it's a platformer right it's a challenging platformer yes right i mean like there are moments where i wanted to throw my controllers but still (laughs) i just had so much fun with it and i think that's the important part two qualities i think that we often we acknowledge but we may undervalue when it comes to vr especially Mm. with indie developers this was developed by two people I think one for the most part, and then the second person got involved. Impressive. But um, it's the two qualities of this. One is um, a game that is fully realized and fleshed out. There is a lot of content here, and it's the fact that there are different ways of completing the levels. There's the speed, there's finding all the collectibles and that. There's, you know, different ways of experiencing the levels, lots of levels and modes, I think is excellent. And polish. This is a well-polished game. So there are so many great games we see and we just go, ah, oh, they just fallen short. You know, Happy Funlands we just spoke about is a great example of that. Is like just the polish in like the, the atmosphere in that, but then there's all these things of like, how did this not get done? Still is a, I would say is a, that is a get it on a N64 cartridge. That is the game. You're not playing it going, oh, if only they just fixed this and this. Stilt is a complete PSVR 2 game agreed i agree i agree yeah. you know i mean so, so many games two three hours boom you're done this is going to take you a while to get through um i love of the variety in the levels love uh the, the power-ups like it just feels it just feels like it's really well thought out um i i did i don't think i knew that the team was that small and uh very impressive very impressive yeah you know, yeah yeah uh miles not to uh not to cut you off by the way i've also posted two north american keys for um for genotype in the chat uh since the beginning of the show so make sure you guys redeem those um oops i forget i forgot to put this back there it is um miles i don't want to cut you off and 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 stop talking about the games that you've been playing but uh, i definitely want to get to to the headline of the show uh, which is Genotype. Um, this game came out accidentally, as games have been doing over on the PlayStation Store lately. I think this is the third one in the course of like about a month that happened with. And uh, and when it launched, it was uh, it was running at uh, sixty or one hundred and twenty reprojected, uh, and there were some game breaking bugs if you got far, far enough. Um, today was the first day you played it, though, right? Correct. And I'd seen the the trailer uh and i've sort of known a bit about it but i genuinely went in not knowing what to expect even including the tone i didn't know if this was going to be a scary dead space game or it was going to be more arcadey um which might it's it's interesting some people might go well obviously we knew this I, i genuinely didn't like there's so many games that we got coming i kind of like going in blind with them when i can um one thing i'm just going to jump to straight away with it and by the way, the quick answer is I had a blast with it. <laughs> loved it, loved nice. it, loved it. Uh, don't want to don't bury that. Um, but you were talking earlier about um, when we're talking about Happy Funland. It's going to seem like such a really uh, weird comparison. But like, why didn't they tell you that you could holster stuff? The start of Genotype, I ran out of ammo and I didn't know how to reload the gun. I'm like, putting it here, here. I just didn't know how to do it. And then I was like, well, kill me. I went back and I paid attention again. They don't tell you how to do it. There was no, They didn't tell you. you. You put it in your slot in your left hand and then you absorb it. They never explained that in the game. And then like an, half an hour, an hour in the game, I'm picking up 
a currency which is called tokens and basically everything you pick up and you slap it on your left hand and you absorb it it's a really cool feature yeah. and they're going oh what's this with tokens oh yeah tokens you can pick up and put it in your left hand to absorb it i'm like why are you telling me like an half an hour an hour in a game i've already done like 15 20 of them because i've worked it out and just like i just felt like such an idiot like i couldn't i didn't know how to re not reload but add more ammo in i'm collecting all this ammo right. and i just thought that was just such a simple thing from the get-go I, so i'm wondering if you if there was a voiceover that just didn't play or that maybe you missed because i i never had a problem with it like from okay. the get-go it, it was crazy yep um, and I'm always happy to admit that I miss stuff. And in Let's Plays, I often get people afterwards going, oh, I hate people that don't know how to play games and don't listen to the instructions. Because I have in-ear chat, often I do miss these things. But I did replay it, and I did work it out for myself in the end. I just want to get that out of the way that when I first started playing this game, I was like, oh, God, this is a bit frustrating. However, once I worked it out, this game looks great. Yep. The movement, I love the movement, dude. This movement is so smooth. I think it's some of the most satisfying movement I've felt in a first per what, person like shooter game uh, on PSVR 2. I just love the speed and the movement of it, the fluidity of it. And I love the Metroidvania style of it, of getting keys. I like the idea that you get keys that light up on your HUD, on your hand for the uh, green, blue, and yellow, I think is the third one. And then when you go to a different area... It, it empties because then you've got to get the same keys for, for that new area. So there's lots of exploration. But the thing that I really like about it is you have this like cord that you pull from your uh, right hand to choose what um, weapon you want to use. Now, I've only seen this being used in a game once before, and that was Dead Hook. And that's when you use the chainsaw. And I love it. You pull it and it's like, that's such a cool yeah, like yeah. mechanic to have. But this is really good because depending on how far you pull it is what um, um, like uh, organism is going to grow, grow on your hand and you're going to use it as a weapon. But the thing I thought was most genius about it is it means that while you're shooting with a hand in uh, with a, a weapon on your right hand, you can still use that right hand. So when I need to pick up ammo in the middle of battle while shooting, I can still pick up something and then slot it. Because how many VR games have you been in where you're using a gun and then you want to pick something up and then you have to like drop an item to then pick it up and then do that? Yeah. And the final thing I'd say is picking up items off the floor, slapping them into your wrist and, and absorbing them, it's so like seamless. There's not dropping accidentally and stuff. Things are so easy to grab and it's one of the smoothest experiences i found with interacting with environments like a lot of the frustration and clunkiness you get with vr games especially at the pace that you can play in this game there's none of it here this is a well polished game and i'm very impressed yeah uh, i mean i think you got a great first impression of the game the um, you know today's patch brought it up to 120 native uh, so it's it's like you said it's a silky smooth experience uh, running around this place feels great um also, like I said, the game breaking bugs that people have talked about prior. Uh, you try to use the uh, the lifts to get from one place to another. Uh, it seems to all be taken care of. I didn't have any crashes. I didn't have any issues today. Um, and uh, it's, dude. I mean, yeah, this is a good game. I saw Looper in the chat say, um, "Come on, man! I've been telling you, it's Dead Space in VR." But I don't agree with that because Dead Space um, was very very heavy on atmosphere and i and i feel like that maybe is something that this game doesn't quite have uh the intensity of it's not a horror game right it's well it's yeah it ha it does have atmosphere because there was a bit where someone was going oh there's not much music and then it's like it starts building up like yeah. there's quiet moments and then really epic or tense moments and i love the sound effects the doors there's a lot of atmosphere in it but it's not as you say the intensity of dead space the, the creatures could easily be scary if they worked in a certain way. There was there was one jump scare I had where they came out of a vent yeah. um, and took me by surprise. But generally, it's just... It feels like an arcade sort of... It, yeah. it reminds me of, like, Doom. Like, that kind of... Uh, uh, or Duke Nukem, kind of. The, the fast movement and all that sort of stuff. You're strafing a lot. And that's not a criticism. Like, I love this a lot. It just feels really, really good. But the environments do lend itself to thinking it's maybe a more of a um, a serious like red matter or dead space sort of game. And that might change later, but I'm an hour and 15 minutes in and at the moment. Um, great atmosphere, but it's 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 fun and arcadey. Yeah. I, 
I don't know if arcade is the right term. I mean, I I, I know I know what you're trying to say because uh, Doom, you know, because it does it, it feels it feels really straightforward. Um, it's it's like taking a game out of that generation of Doom and Duke, Duke Nukem, like back in the early days. Um, but obviously, you know, with the polish and uh, the immersion of VR. And then on top of that, throwing in the Metroidvania element to it, yes. Um, because man, the number I I I've been backtracking a lot in this game. Uh, there's a point where you know you get this ability to kind of shrink down, so the the world around you becomes really really big, and suddenly you're like, shit! I've been seeing these vents that I haven't been able to access for hours now. <laughs> and Now I have to kind of go back and uh, and go find all those vents because now I can access them. And where where do they lead? Mm. What's what's going to happen? Uh, what new place are they going to lead me to? Um, and obviously a big chunk of it is finding keys and just sort of like checking off mission objectives. It's very straightforward. It feels like, but with the addition of audio logs, if you choose to listen to them, um, text logs, if you Dude, decide to do that, the text logs, you just throw down. You don't have to store them anywhere. Dude, I was stacking them up and I was like, I guess I just, <laughs> and then I just threw them all down in a pile. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's yeah. some, there's some like, uh, so I, I've got, I definitely yeah. have uh issues like add issues where i i'm in the game and i pick up a text log and i and and i'm scanning it but not to get the context i'm just scanning it to see if there's any numbers because there's any numbers that means there's a combination yes right it's either giving me a full combination to unlock something somewhere or it's a partial combination and so like if there's numbers i throw it in my inventory and and i and i hold on to that because i know i'm going to need it later so yep um so yeah so i i do think it's 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 basic on some levels or straightforward on some levels arcadey on some levels but it's it's almost like as deep as you want to make it like if you really want to absorb the story and listen to the narrative listen to these characters talking to each other reading the text logs um you know uh, listening to the audio logs it, there's a lot here right um and uh and i mean i have no idea how long it is that that's that's the big question mark for me because i basically just finished off an entire area and uh and now i'm moving on to the next and i don't know what that means like does that mean does that mean i'm going to be in this next area for three and a half hours as well and like you know how many areas are there there's, there's i've got a lot of questions um but i will tell you that this update that makes it run all smooth makes it feel all good to play um it's this footage of me trying to put some in my inventory and not being able to do it. Um, it's uh, it's. I would say it's at a point right now that I would recommend picking it up. It's like twenty seven forty nine, I think, here in the states. I do want to say though, I know that this is a small team and they're working around the clock to try to like you know get this thing up to the th- the place we want it to be. However, I've been talking to Mark over there at Bulwark Games for the last week or so. And I keep stressing to him, I was like, there is something missing here, right? When you're walking around and you're interacting with these items and you're slapping that shit on your hand and then like pulling the trigger to uh, ingest absorb it, it, absorb it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it, there needs to be haptics, there needs to be adaptive Dude. triggers. It's, it's, it, it's missing this extra piece of the puzzle that would bring everything together and and I really think that they missed a beat here by not including that at launch or being on not not being able to get it out for this patch. Um, but he but he knows and they know. Yeah. And uh, and so they, they they are aware that this is something that the cats are going to want and uh, and they're going to be. It, it, it sounds like they're going to have that done in the next patch. So as much as I want to I tell everybody, hey, this is a great game. You should go out and get it. I kind of want to see like what the next patch is about and and tell everyone to hold off a little bit and pick it up then. Yeah, the that was the one bit of the haptics. I like the haptics with the weapons, um, but when it, absorbing it in the hands, you want to feel that like, yeah, I'm absorbing it. I'm getting more powerful, and yeah. like that 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 is something I was really surprised it it, it didn't have. But um, something I, I also didn't realize uh, until a bit into my playthrough was the sort of the the it's the grappler one, but what's it called? Like the goober? Oh, it's not the the, oh, the, 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 the grubber. Grubber? The grubber, that was it. The grubber, the goober. Um, yeah, the grubber. Using that as a weapon when you have no ammo, that does a lot of damage, but you have to get quite close up and you can take damage from like the smoke and stuff that gets from it. But um, yeah, dude, um, I just love how this game feels, like the locomotion. And there are a lot of games that are good, you know, like good space adventures yeah. where I play and I'm like, this is good. But I don't feel compelled to come. I'm not thinking about coming back to it. Um, and 
I don't want, I was like, I don't want to really name, but I'll, I'll give an example. Like Hubris is a great example. Like I yep. didn't, I have, I've really enjoyed it when I've played it, but I've just not gone back to it. And yep. I've like, um, and I do want to complete it because I hear there's some cool stuff coming up, but it was just because I, it's all about the engagement, especially when you're in a game, which is obviously what VR is about. You are in that world. There was a lot of moments where I was like, I just, I just want to get to the next bit and see what happens. This game, you're always looking onto the next thing. And so sort of the fact that motion is quick. I love the map. The map is really great. You have the fog of war. So you're trying to, it's very easy to see where you need to get to. I think it has really interesting mechanics. Um, and you're always trying to find out the next thing that you can unlock. And, you know, as you say, like Metroidvania, it just lends itself to being this world where I'm just like, yeah, I can't wait to to play more of it. So um, I went into this game completely blind. I thought it's just going to be another action sci-fi shooter that will be cool. But there's a lot of games that are cool like this. This, I would argue, is excellent uh, from what I feel so far. But again, I'm only an hour and ten in, so I always say that with a, a massive hint of caution because things could go very quickly downhill. But if it carries on the way it is, then I'm going to have a really great time with this game. Yep. Yep. To me, to me, it feels like the solid eight out of 10 when like, unless something goes completely downhill uh, or goes, you know, really uphill to, to change my thoughts on that. It just feels like a really solid eight out of 10 game. Like I am, I, I was playing uh, before the show to capture this footage and check it all out, get some impressions. And, uh, and, and I made some serious progress and I was like, Oh man, I don't want to stop. I don't, I don't have enough time uh, to keep going. So, um, yeah, dude. Thank God there's an auto map in this game. Thank God, because I, I, it's a it's it's a research station, and so a lot of the corridors look the same, a lot of rooms look the same, uh, and you're like, oh wait, how do I get back to the kitchen area? How do I get back to the lounge area? And you can just have that map out constantly and run around the entire, uh, and you can run around the entire map with the map out, uh, you know, with the with the arrow turning and moving as you go, which is so important for somebody like me with no sense of direction. It's uh, uh, just thankful for like these little quality of life things that go on in this game. I mean, it's really good. Also, I don't know what it is about VR games, but penguins keep appearing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it, it it's a, it's almost like a like a tribute to you, Miles, or or maybe a test for you to see how you'll treat. These. It is a test. Ed, I think his name was Ed. Ed was the Ed the penguin. That sounds right. Um, and I really wanted to save him, but then I had to end the live stream. So um, yeah, I'll go back and hopefully be able to save him. But he seemed he seemed happy. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, somebody has, had asked in the chat how much better this looks than the Quest Three version. Um, it, it all comes down to the details. Honestly, I, I I don't think it's this like night and day difference. Um, but I do think uh, I mean I'm much much happier with the way that it looks on PSVR two over Quest Three. I was actually fine with the way that it looked at launch you know even being reprojected i was like oh this usually reprojection bothers me but this is not you know really getting in the way of my enjoy enjoying this not getting in the way of, uh, of the immersion and and now you know now that it's like running uh twice as smooth and um yeah i mean it's i'll, t I'll tell you man, it's not not the most not not the most striking upgrade um from quest 3 to psvr 2 but for an indie team you know that made a, this nice big world to explore um I, I think they did a really really good job and this is you know probably the best this is the best looking version of genotype you'll ever see uh what they're doing here miles i don't know if uh, you've gotten the details but they're uh running the entire game at at, uh, at the native psvr2 headset resolution and not using eye tracking but the focal point they're using foveated rendering but usually the outskirts of the foveated rendering, the, the, the outside of it is really low res, but no, like what they're doing is the outskirts of it is running at the highest resolution of PSVR two native resolution. And then the, and then as you get closer to the focal point, it's running at 1.5 super sampled. And wow. so, you know, so it's it really, you're just not going to find a clearer version of this game. Like this is, this is going to be the best looking version that you're, you'll find. There's not a ton of effects. There's like little reflections here and there. There's some nice lighting here and there, but like overall, you know, again, it's just a, a really well optimized version of the Quest Three game. I think it's probably the best way to say that. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, no, massive congrats to the uh, to the devs because um, I can only begin to imagine the uh, frustration with how things did get released. And yeah, much love to them. Yeah. Uh, 
Miles, let's talk, talk about a couple of these tips that came in while we were talking about this. Um, we got Lord Plastron with the Canadian $14 says, normally I don't say a goddamn thing, but the camera flash from Happy Funland sounds like a Simpsons reference to one of my favorite uh, favorites at Duff Gardens. I am the Lizard Queen, says Lisa Simpson. Um, I don't know the reference, but the the, um, the 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 photo booth is a really cool effect yeah. in that game. To save your game. Really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the uh, I so I don't know how old this Simpsons reference is because um, I, I I dropped out after the first ten years and I have no recollection of a lot of these things. Uh, but I mean, it sounds like there's other Simpsons references in here, so that could very well be the case. I don't know. Uh, thanks for saying a goddamn thing, Lord. We appreciate you. Uh, Thundercat with the two euros note quid says hi Miles, hi AJ. Great to see you back on four miles. Good to be back. Um, and yeah, and no, I'm just takes a bit of warming up and that, but I feel good. And uh, it's just, I've, I've missed playing VR um, on a regular basis and stuff. Um, so it feels good. So thank you to everyone that has been tuning into the Let's Plays. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to getting on top of it again, because as I mentioned last week, I'm then going to be looking at doing some, you know, returning to certain VR games and playing more longer form. And just sort of hanging out and stuff on on live streams. Whereas when I do the Let's Plays, they are a format which is from the beginning, so that even when people watch it back, um, they can get a sense of like what the game is. That's the kind of purpose. But I do want to just go back and play some games much longer and stuff. So, yeah. I guess we're not going to comment on the fact that he called me AJ. Oh, I thought you were just talking to AJ in the chat. AJ's in the chat, but I guess. <laughs> Which makes it worse, right? Yeah, what, if, what about Brian? If anybody has anything they want to say to AJ in the chat, please send it through in super chat format, so that yes. I, can, I can convey it to AJ for you. We're not we're not, we're not going to tolerate any of this, these free conversations in the chat. And and also, you, you, you've 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 always been here, Brian. You're not back. I guess that's the only one thing I can think of. I don't know. I've always been here. Always here. I, I, I was never born. Here. I will never die. I've just <laughs> always been here. I'm a mythical <laughs> creature from beyond. Oh, man. Ah, man. I don't know. I don't know. I got nothing for you guys. Um, Miles, I, I don't want, I don't want to, I, I know people tune into the show expecting a, a two hour uh, epic, but um, it's been, it's like I said, it's been sort of a rough week and I'm sort of ready to call it a day. Um, I really appreciate everyone being here. You guys have been awesome. Um, uh, but I think it's time to do some 20 questions if you're down for that. Absolutely, Brian. Let's do it. Excellent. Um, hey, oh wait, am I? Am I are you, sorry, I didn't even look at the notes. So no, you I've got the. Uh, I've, it's it's me today. I'm hosting. Okay. Um, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw the fourth North American uh, key for genotype in the chat. Oh yeah, I've got to do the last one. Actually, do you know what? I think there might be one that I missed, so I'm gonna do it. But it might have already been taken. <laughs> so I had it highlighted. <laughs> Good luck, people. Uh, that one definitely the DBXX, but this one is a maybe. I'm going to uh, put maybe genotype. <laughs> Miles, you want to? Uh, I'm going to ask you: Do you want to go hard mode or super hard mode for this? Uh, let's let's go hard mode. Hard mode, not super hard mode. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Sirens on my end, you guys. Wow. It's loud. Loud sirens. All right, man. Well. I think it's oh, and then after 20 questions, I want to talk about this, if that's all right. Look okay. at that. Everything is all right, Miles. Look at that. Whatever you Little want penguin. to talk about. What, 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 what where, and why, how? Huh? Yeah, he'll, he'll be back. He'll be back after 20 questions. Okay. After 20 questions. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, all right, man. Well, you guys know how this works. Um, I've got a PSVR 1 or PSVR 2 game up in this head of mine, and it's your job out there and Miles' job up here to guess what game that is. You got 20 yes or no questions and only six minutes on the clock. Are you ready? Uh, I think so. I think so. We can do this game, cats. Let's do it. All right. On your mark, get Dez. Go. Do they have multiplayer? No. No multiplayer. Is it on PSVR 2? Yes. Is it on PSVR? No. Not PSVR. Okay. Um... Do you shoot guns in this? 
Um, I'm, I think the answer is yes. Uh, on, in genotype, I'd count them as guns. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, then the uh, then then yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't be genotype because I'm not going anywhere near it for the moment. Um, um, what, I, what I was going to say is that um, I think the answer is yes, but I think that but also saying that will lead you astray. I think. Okay. Think. Don't think about okay. guns. I've literally just wrote in my in my notes yes. So when I look back at it, it's like, what use is that? Yep. Yes. Yes. Guns. Yep. Um. Uh. Okay. Um. Have they gone for a realistic aesthetic? Um. I mean, <laughs> yes. Uh. With a major with a major asterisk after that, like it's okay. it's not a cartoony okay. world. I'll say that. No, That's, no, no. You're going for realism, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's five. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um. Is it a game that to you know to, to if you're going to really play it the proper way, would you say it's recommended that you have strong VR legs? No, no, VR legs not needed. Um, is it is it a puzzle game? Uh, I would say that there are small puzzle elements included yes but overall no okay uh is it a horror game <sighs> again it's not a horror game because you're not going to okay. be uh, not going to be like scared uh but i think there is a vibe a horror vibe yes. that they're going for so yeah okay um did it did, did it come out this year no didn't come out this year okay Um, you know that's not true Robert these are very good answers helpful answers not AJ answers you know that's not true is it a good game I, I wouldn't say so no that's tough okay. <laughs> um, is it is it cyberpunk themed yeah I think that's a good genre for it Okay, and would you say uh, it's a super game? I mean, would I or would the developers? Well, <laughs> okay. Um, it doesn't have super in the title. I, you can't ask a question like that, can you? Yeah, you no. can ask whatever the fuck you want. I know. I didn't know if you could ask about words in the. I, I was thinking about super uh, super death show, but um, mm -hmm. that was. But um, you want to ask that? You can ask that. Nah, fast nah, nah, that's right, man. Uh, Cyberpunk feet. Is it? Um, oh man. Hmm. Is it the developers only PSVR two game? I believe so. Um, um, oh, um. You said that you, you do believe it's their only PSVR two game. I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> people say I always get easy road. Um, has it got super in the title? Yes, it does. That. Yes. Okay. okay. Wait, is it super dev game? Yes, is it, yes it is. Uh, <laughs> August 1st, 2023 from intense company limited. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is Super Death Game Show. Um, I feel like that was a cheap question to ask. Like, has he got soup in the title? I feel like you shouldn't ask that. I didn't know how else to. I don't know what question I could have asked to really I, nail it in. I mean, like, I don't. Th I don't think that's cheap at all, to be honest with you. Okay. Like, it's just making sure you know the, like answer, the game. Making sure you know yeah. the answer before you say the answer. Because yeah. hey, hey, say because yeah. you know, making a guess like that could be end of game, man. You could that's lose. True. That's true. 
Um, I love that Looper knew this five questions ago. Yeah, yeah. I saw it and I was like, I think that is a good one. That's yeah. why I went for the cyberpunk question. Um, yeah. Uh, I've, not, I've not been paying attention to the chat, you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, it, let me scroll back up here a little bit. Um, AJ over at PSVR Underground with $5 tip says, hey, 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 Brian. Hey, Brian. Hey, AJ. Is it Monday already? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Power Fantastic with the $5 tip says, cheers for the key, boys. Oh, Power Fantastic got one of the keys. I've been seeing a lot of people in the, you know in in the chat say when they um you know when they redeem the key. So thank you very much for that. So people wondering if it was like a scam or something. Also a shout out to Bulwark Games. Uh, Mark from Mark from Bulwark Games sent me a pile of keys this morning. Um, couldn't have done this without them. We appreciate uh, the offer to you know the, to let us share the love with our community. So thank you very much, Bulwark. Uh, Wild Hour, the Game Cat. Welcome to the level one membership. Guys, don't forget, if you're a member here, you can always, uh, you get a free super chat every month. So make sure you use that. Get your fucking voice heard. Phil PP, the game cat with the $2 tip says, thanks for genotype. Oh, another winner. Please try magic in Hellsweeper this weekend. Oh, was that you that was talking about it on Discord earlier, um, Mr. PP? Uh, I saw you saying somebody was talking about how the magic in in, um, in Hellsweeper is awesome. I combine different magic types, good stuff. Yeah, um, def Hell Hellsweeper is relatively close to the top of my list of games I want to focus on um, when I start getting back into the headset again. So. Yeah, it's it's so good, dude. And uh, <laughs> my friend Johnny, I was playing with on the co op mode. I was telling him about he he just bought the game and. Uh, he uh i was telling him oh you can do backflips and go in the settings and do it and he just did the backflip and he's halfway round upside down he goes uh no i'm turning that off <laughs> like <laughs> he did not like it but i just love the fact that he said it like when he's halfway through the somersault just going uh nope definitely turning that off <laughs> my, my stuff I mean, the somersaults in it are so badass, but they really do demand a lot. You, that is like the ultimate VR legs yeah. uh, requirement. Um, it's incredible, though. Yeah. Uh, Imzadi in the chat says, please never say Mr. PP again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could probably handle that. Um, yeah, AJ, a, a, you know, I was talking to AJ about this one recently and he, uh, in, in voice chat over on Discord, and he, he kept, kept referring to it as like Devil May Cry in VR. Um, which is, you know, clearly something that I think a lot of people would really want, especially since some of the mm -hmm. mods over on the PC side of things don't really deliver. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to get the hang of this, uh, to, to be able to like, you know, sort of string a bunch of combos together and, uh, make, you know, make myself feel like a badass. Like I was able to eventually in Sirento, um, Sirento, uh, yeah, it took hours for me to get used to the combat in Sirento, used to all the different things you can do. Um, so much, so much optimizations, your loadouts and magic and things like that. So there's so much to learn and so much customization with cosmetics and everything. So yeah, really, really excited to get my head around all of that. Miles fifth with the Australian two dollar tips says love your merch, Miles. And I completely forgot. Uh, you've got Sorry? you've got all sorts of new merch. Uh, what's 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 going on, man? So I've had some of this merch design like from a year ago, but you know what it's like, Brian. We all have things we want to do, but just sometimes they take much longer than expected. Uh, but yeah, I launched this week uh, my merch store. Um, and funnily enough, the best selling... I have a Moles Dyer Live mug. No one's gone for that. Everyone's gone for this other mug that I held up already, which was the Penguin Revenge one, which was this. That um, is of... awesome. I need to buy one of those. <laughs> I like the colors it's, too, um, man. The, the orange yeah, and the white look great. Dude, it went really well with it. So uh, there it is. I removed the PlayStation logo off the headset just so I couldn't get sued because mm -hmm. that's just a generic headset. I mean, who knows what headset that could be? That's also but, a gen um, generic boy in the headset. Who knows who it could be? Exactly. Could be anybody. Who, who knows what that is? Yep. Um, but yeah, I had my first cupper out of this. Um, I've also got some cool shirts um, for anyone that wants to check it out. Uh, and I did speak to Brian beforehand and he was cool about it. He was like, yeah, you can mention it on the show. Um, if you go to quest empathy.com, I'll type it in the chat. Um, oh, I didn't do it as a link. I've got to put www.first. Oh, uh, if you go to uh, quest for empathy.com, uh, the store's there. And 
uh, if you get to checkout and you use the discount code Quest Launch, all one word, you get ten percent off your entire order. I think there's only ten of them left, so um, if you want to get discount, um, but there's t-shirts, there's a gaming mouse mat, which is awesome, but um, way too big for my desk, so I need to get a regular mouse mat made, uh, a tote bag. Um, and stuff like that, but um, yeah, the, the, I, I've, I've ordered all the merchandise, so I've checked it all out myself and been really happy with the quality, um, and it's a really good site that I, I know Brian and I have been talking um, for the next round of um, Without Parole merch. I definitely think it's a site that should be used because, um, yeah, just really, really good. Oh, and that's the other thing. Anyone that orders merch off my site, um, you'll get a personal video message from me thanking you for it because that's another feature. I get a ping on the app. And it says so and so's ordered it. It tells, and as you're recording the video message, it has their name, what they've ordered, um, and whether it's their first, second, third order. And so it's really cool. So when you're thanking people, you can literally talk about what they've ordered. Um, but I've been surprised that the, the best selling item is the uh, Penguin Revenge mug. So go check it out. Yeah, I mean, I I completely see why. I mean, like it's <laughs> it's good stuff, you know. But it's a, it's all very traditional Miles Dyer stuff. Um, yeah, which is you know awesome. So that that, that mouse mad uh, pad uh, m- mouse. We say mouse m- 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 mat over m- here, m- m- and you mouse. say mouse pad for you, or is it the other way around? Pad. But that photo is actually of it on my desk, so I actually yes. did replace it on that one. Um, it's obscenely large, yeah. but some people like those big mouse. Yeah, the the uh, the vitamin G pin set is great. Um, oh, dude, but I got the big buttons ordered, and they're way too big. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're massive. Like, yeah. yeah, I really appreciate you. This is what, yeah, get, get yeah. the smaller ones. But if, you, if you've got, like, a backpack or something like that, you gotta, you got to pin one of those to it. Um, no, this is great, yeah. man. This is great. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Just, um, as I said, it's something I want to do for a long time. But, like, finding places to do merch and that is really difficult. Like, you know, I've spoken a lot about it. Um, but... They're a, they're a pretty new and upcoming site. They also do like memberships like Patreon. So I, as I'm scaling down my Patreon, I'm probably going to maybe set it up here because they take a much smaller cut. I think they do like 8% cut on this site. Um, but always the risk when you scale down from one platform and try and move people to another, you're going you're gonna to lose some people. Not, not out of any nefarious means, just sure. like it's effort. You're asking people to switch it. And so yeah. um, it's difficult in that. But um, it's yeah. kind of an exciting site. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my favorite comment I got recently was from uh, from a cat who uh, only recently got a PSVR two headset and had been you know more active in our community and, and or watching the channel a lot uh, during the PSVR one days. Uh, never canceled his Patreon support. Bought a PSVR two headset and was glad to come back and be like, like oh I'm glad I never canceled my my Patreon because because uh, because here I am and I'm back and you know just as invested as ever. I was like, oh, that's sweet. Like, I've, I always feel bad, you know. Like, I've got I've got memberships and uh, subscriptions that I forgot that I forgot to cancel. Um, but you know, like most of the time, it just goes to like a big corporation, and you're like, oh man, I'm never gonna get that money back. And you know, fuck the fuck that big yeah. corporation. At least at least when you forget to cancel your Patreon membership to one of us, it goes to two guys trying to do stuff out of their bedrooms. <laughs> That's, that's exactly it. Exactly it. And and so just as a wider point, like to all the game cats, what you know, with what happened recently with the the meetup, I still can't believe that meetup. Like it was just so so special. And this community is absolutely incredible. And um, we always talk about it. But whether it's super chats, whether it's just watching the show, hitting the like button, very very important. Let's not forget to do that. Um, I'll just do it now as well. Um, but no, we honestly we appreciate you so so much. Um, it's what makes what we do an absolute joy because we get to spend time with just really lovely people that really care about the medium and we know it's testing times with how the media is and the state of the gaming industry but the reality is we have an amazing headset we get to have all these amazing gaming experiences we have devs that get involved who give us game keys uh, and then brian aj west and i get to also give you a sense of what games are going to be right for you and what not um so yeah uh, Ian Marsh in the chest is Brian. Where's your merch? Uh, Teespring. So always been on Teespring. Um, I you know there's been very few updates. I don't. I still don't have like a sirens on my end um, shirt or hat or anything like that. Uh, but I, I did when when the Brian bites first came out. I created a I created a shirt for that that has like three paw prints and then parentheses. But cats have four paws, um, which has been my favorite piece of merch so far. Um, 
And, uh, and I'm going to be doing obviously at some point, like a massive relaunch of the store. It may not be on Teespring anymore because that's kind of an outdated way to do things. And their store is impossible to work with. Like it sucks to just organize shit and like edit a, a design that you already have. Like you can't take something that you've put up there and then go in and edit it for future orders. You have to like start from scratch again. You can't just go in and take a design that's already there and then put it on something else. Like, in, you know, like three months later, you have to start from scratch. And so I'm definitely looking for another place to do this kind of stuff. Um, so if you if you check out the, uh, the Teespring store I have, that stuff is all going to be taken down at some point and probably will not be available uh, to purchase anymore. So, uh, and, and I, I've, dude, my profit margin on these things, I, I take like maybe a dollar on each item sold because I'd much rather have the cats have it in, instead sure. of instead of making a bundle on it. Like I'd much rather people are able to afford it than me like make some kind of crazy profit on it. So um, because it's already it's already so expensive, dude. Um, having used other stuff before fourth wall, that was what amazed me. Fourth wall, they say this is what we recommend as the profit margin. I was like, no, I'm, I want to take it right down, yeah. and you still get a decent profit as well. So um, I'll definitely. We'll, we'll talk about it and stuff like that but um i think this is just what happens dude is you have all these companies that like dominate the industry you know in terms of t-shirt you know they're always at top of search results and so they don't have to innovate and that this one's come along they're not actually that well known but i i found them out because of some like voice actors that had merch and i was mm -hmm. like oh, their store looks nice and like oh this is how we do it and uh you know at the end of the day i'm the same as you I just want people to have access to it. I don't want to be, right. you know, um, that's that's why we do it at the end of the day. And I'll do the, the uh, game cat uh, wristbands you did. Mine's, uh, where is it? I've got, I got a massive pile of them somewhere. Dude, um, I, <laughs> I came home with like, I mean, I think I got 300 printed. I think I came home with Dude, like Dude, you were handing them out. You're like, take some. Take more. Take right? some. You already and got like, two. Have Brian, five. man. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, this is over my, my limit of what I can take back to the UK. <laughs> like... <laughs> Um, Kisnell said, uh, oh, oh, thanks, Nick. Nick, Nick posted the link to the Teespring site. Again, grab what you can from there um, if you want it because I don't think we're going to be doing that much longer. Kisnell said, is there any members-only videos on YouTube as well as Patreon-only videos? The answer, is, uh, the answer is yes, sort of. Um, I don't like... You know, the fact is, if you're supporting the channel, I want to make sure that like you're getting the rewards for supporting the channel. And so what I've, been, what I've done for the last couple Patreon videos... Uh, is create a community post that can only be seen by you know the, the, whatever the uh, corresponding tier is um, community post uh, for the members and so uh, I want to make sure that the members over here are able to see the same stuff that the Patreon supporters can see. It's it's all a mess. It's all a mess. And I'm with you, Miles. I think at a certain point I need to consolidate everything um, and be and, and I've got to. I mean, like YouTube is. YouTube is where I post all my content. And so right. uh, I, I think I've got to consolidate and bring everybody over to YouTube at a certain point because it's just it, it's just massively more difficult to try to be like, okay, you're over here and you get these rewards and you guys are over here and you get these rewards, but I want to make sure that if you're over here, yeah. you also get these rewards and it's, it's, it's a mess. Um, and so- and it, it just it, adds so much extra stress. Yeah. Um, like, and, and this is a general bit of advice to anyone that's ever doing this as content creators. And this is something that I failed at when I first started Patreon. The number one rule to follow, and I fail this from time to time, is the rewards that you give for people supporting you shouldn't become more work than the work that people are supporting you in the first place. Like, right. the reason people are supporting you on Patreon is because they love what you're doing. So if you can give them extra stuff, that's great. When I first did Patreon, I said, oh, at this tier, I will write a personal um, postcard every, like, three months. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, it's great. Every three months, I can sit down and do it. But that's not how it works. No, every month, because depending on when people have signed up, so every month I was like, oh, I've got to write some more postcards and stuff. And it became too overwhelming. And then you feel guilt of like, oh, I've got to do this. And it just completely suffocates the enjoyment. The reason people were supporting me was not for the postcards. It's a nice thing that I promised. But if, if I hadn't have done that, they would have supported me anyway. And so it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting learning process. And yeah. so being able to have that exclusive member content in one place, because I assume on Patreon anyway, it's just unlisted YouTube videos, right? Yes which is what I did on Patreon as well. So what you're doing is you're doing a hidden post that you would have done on YouTube. Whereas on YouTube, you can literally say, this is public to members of this tier, which means if the link gets shared as well, you it's can so literally fine. share the link yeah. on Twitter 
and it will say you click anyone can click on it and it will say oh to access this become a member yeah so it's like it's 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 great but anyway that's some inside baseball for people that are just curious to know how this stuff kind of works on that it's, it is it's really interesting what youtube have been doing but i think they just saw that patreon was just hoovering up all the uh all the support yeah for sure for sure and uh i did promise some uh first impression live streams uh like pre-recorded awesome. live streams for for the patreon supporters as well and oh man i'm so i'm so mad that my twilight zone one didn't work out because the first level of twilight zone i really was like kind of panicky and like oh god i don't want to go into the dark and blah 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 and then like i don't know where the fuck the video went because i had to i, I completely screwed it up um but dude, I've just, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just all a lot right now. And uh, I've not been able to like really process, um, you know, doing getting anything done, to be honest with you. So uh, hopefully, hopefully soon enough. Um, Miles, we got one more got tip. One. Oh, what, you okay, guys... And then I've got one more thing to say. Oh, I thought it was the, I thought the merch thing was the one more thing. Damn it. Oh, no, um, I just thought it was something else. Because um, tomorrow uh, at 8 p.m. UK time, um midday eastern 3 p.m uh sorry 3 p.m eastern midday pacific uh i'm running something called c smash saturdays if anyone has c smash it's on discount at the moment we're doing a, a get together to play it um so if anyone wants to find multiplayer uh we're doing that tomorrow so should um, be fun. I, listen, I know i know that you and rapid eye movers are working together um but and I, but i actually meant to start the show with this it just slipped my mind um so C Smash is is it available now on the flat screen? Uh, no, it's not. When when is that happening? So so that's happening in late summer. So okay. yeah, it was yesterday. It's been a bit of a long week. Um it was announced that C Smash VRS is coming to the flat screen. So there was a promo that you see it on the PlayStation Portal, which is very, very cool. <laughs> um this this is a funny thing, right? Because I, I work with them a couple of days a week and so I'm a fan of VR and you know I I'm like I want cross play and everything like that and then also there's things that I don't know because the developers are working on it and so all I can say at the moment is um it's come out on Meta Quest yesterday as well which I'm really really happy there is no cross play currently I would have loved it to happen but the official word is it is on the roadmap I'm assuming it's if it's a success on Meta Quest they can then make it happen because it's not just flicking a switch to make it crossplay. In terms of the flat screen game, if you own C Smash VRS on VR, you're going to get the flat screen game, and and vice versa. If you buy the flat screen game when it comes out, you'll have the VR version. Um, but in terms of what it means, if there's any relationship between the two and that, that stuff that will be rolled out in the coming months, um, just because it's been worked on at the moment. Um, and yeah, um, it's it's interesting because it's a hybrid game that's gone from vr to flat screen uh which um we were talking offline i think the only time it's happened was um the persistence on psvr where it was a vr game that they made a flat screen one off um, yeah i think i think we can come up with another example other than that but um the interesting thing for me in my head it was like how is this going to work right and then and and then uh and then when i saw the the teaser that they put out for it was it today or yesterday uh i was like oh right Oh right, Cosmic Smash was a third-person flat-screen game on Dreamcast. Right. I was like, so, so that's exactly how it's going to work. Um, so in my head, I was like, man, this is a terrible idea. But then, uh, but then realizing like it all kind of comes full circle and to make it cross-play with PS5 and PSVR2 users, I think this is actually a much better idea than I thought it was originally. So, dude, oh, if, if, if and, and again, good, oh good yeah, call, yeah, 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 oh that yeah, Borderlands, down. yeah. Um... Yeah, oh, sorry, Foglands. Yeah, Foglands was done uh, in sort of in sync, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was released yeah. at the same time. This is something that they've sort of, they're engineering. So, look, hand on heart, I don't know what's going to happen with the launch because I've literally just been, my, my remit has been to promote the teaser, and I'm excited of it as a fan. Yeah. The dream for me would be that they make it cross-play between the flat screen and the VR game, because if they can do that that's going to increase the multiplayer pool, which is why we want cross-play between Meta and PSVR 2. VR is such a small pool. that, And it's why we talk about hybrid games generally. You want to be able to play... Actually, Rec Room, you could do it. Rec Room, you could play in VR with friends on the flat screen. Right. Um, or on your phone. <laughs> or, or is that, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, we just want things that are going to increase the player pool. So that Because the depressive thing about C Smash, and it's why one of the things I said when I joined and to help him out was although the focus was on the MetaQuest launch, was I want to get 
PSVR 2 up and running again because it's really fun on multiplayer. So what we're doing is one hour every Saturday, every week. There's obviously a Discord as well, just so that people know that when they go on, there's going to be people to play with because unfortunately, all other times of the week you go on, you're very lucky if you find anyone to play with. Um, uh, so yeah, it's it's been really interesting working with them and sort of seeing behind the scenes the business of VR and also like the challenges because the reality is games are really hard to make and when it comes to multiplayer there's a lot of multiplayer games to be playing and uh yeah it's it's a game that the more i've played it over the past year the more i've had appreciation for it and it's it's one of the reasons that i chose to work with them because if it was a game like i, don't, I was gonna say forest farm <laughs> i shouldn't just be kicking them while they're down but like it's got to be a game that excites you and and i like what they're doing with this and and to be honest them doing this new dimensions thing i think that's a really cool really cool idea like so yeah the game cat andrew ehrenreich with the two dollar tip says happy friday brian happy friday miles happy friday to you too andrew ehrenreich andrew ehrenreich don't know what i said the first time maybe i got it right Mm -hmm. Probably not. Um, but thank you, everybody, for being here. Happy Friday to each and every one of you. Uh, thanks, everybody, helps this channel run. Uh, not just my amazing co-host here, Miles Dyer from YouTube.com slash Miles. Make sure you go subscribe to his channel, but also all my mods who did an exceptional job this evening. If anybody was paying attention, people have way too much time on their hands. Thank you, mods, for keeping that, Unbelievable. Uh, keeping the, the chat in order. Uh, we love you so very much for it. Thanks to Rypop, who gets us up to pod, on podcast services of your choice. We've got Rody the GameCat Army General, who puts timestamps into the show after the fact. Everyone who supports us financially over on YouTube.com slash, nope, Patreon.com slash Without Parole Games, probably. I don't know. Also, everyone that's a member over here. Thank you very much. Also, thank you to everybody who tips during the show. You guys are keeping the lights on. We really, really appreciate it. Um, but you know what? We say this all the time. Just want to be very, very clear. Money is so secondary around here. We're just happy you're here. We're happy that you're part of the community. Uh, this community is fucking incredible. Um, and uh, and so we thank you for being here. We thank you for being over on Discord. Uh, and just you guys make my day better each and every day. Uh, and that's way more important than any any amount of Patreon support or or YouTube membership or YouTube super chat so thank you guys very much uh we also know there's a whole bunch of you sit back and watch the show don't say a goddamn word we know you're out there and we love you just as much happy friday miles happy friday brian you get some good rest mister and have a good weekend game cats enjoy genotype and all the other wonderful games and uh after the fall on sunday 2 p.m eastern do it let's go Hey, Miles, did you give away all those genotype keys? I did, Brian. Good, so did I. Kevin Rice says, Brian Bears going gray. Kevin hasn't been paying attention. <laughs> I've, I've, I've had like uh, the, the, the white fangs, you know, uh, on both, <laughs> both sides of my, uh, of my chin. It's been white for years, 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 years. Um, but I did shave my head. <laughs> I think that's the bigger... Dude, I'm happen. getting all the uh, white coming out the sides of my, my head now. Just like every time I get it cut, it, it, it comes quicker and quicker. So I'm like, yeah, it's happening. But embrace it. Embrace it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, it means just, you're wise. It means you're wise. Like I, there, there were a lot of things I hated about seeing pictures of me from, uh, from PAX East. But uh, I was like, man, the one thing that I can rectify immediately is this fucking mess of a haircut that I've got. Like this is just fucking, it, it doesn't matter what, what, which, which day it was. The hair always looked fucking terrible, and finally I was like, "It's all coming off." Shave that, dude. Shit. It's V. It's VR hair. It's VR hair. I mean, it's all in, on brand. It's on brand, man. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. At a certain point, you're like, "Man, this bald, this bald spot is just getting too fucking big. Why am I even trying to hide it anymore?" So, um, we got clip of the week. We do have clip of the week. This one comes to us from, which is such a great name. I always love this. 
Friends have Xbox. Guys, if you don't know, you can get your clip of the weekend on the show. Uh, this is these is from a couple weeks back, so we're definitely backlogged on this. If you if something cool happened to you in a game, uh, or something ridiculous happened to you in a game, make sure you clip it and uh, and 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 upload it to our clip of the week channel over on Discord. This week, let's see what friends have Xbox has to say. I guess I'm not getting that back. <laughs> the short one, man. That was good, though. I fucking love it. This should ever happen to you in Cube. It was just like... Go, going going spelunking in Cube is like one of my least favorite things to do. Because it's like... It just takes forever to get back out. <laughs> so I yeah, go with that, that teleport either. thing. Oh my goodness, dude. I do want to get back to it. The stuff I've been seeing people posting on like the PSVR Reddit has been mind blowing. Like these cr like glass pyramids mm -hmm. with the light. The game looks amazing. Like I'm just oh, yeah. really impressed. And it's the same with Minecraft. Like I, I enjoyed Minecraft, and then when you see people that really know how to build a Minecraft, I'm just like, it's like a museum. Just incredible. Uh, who was it? Kevin Russ again telling me to get the mohawk back, dude. Mm. The the mohawk would be great to bring back if the bald spot wasn't in the same spot as where the mohawk should grow. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I, unless I get some implants or something, which isn't happening. I don't, I don't think I'm getting the mohawk back. All right, you guys, that's enough. I'm tired. We love you all. Have a great week.